Hey, this is Jerry from Blizz Studio, and in this particular tutorial, we are going to add jump to our third person controller. So if you're ready to get jumping, let's go. Okay, so here we are starting out in Mixamo. We want to add a jump to our player. So we need a jump animation. So here I have my character Fong, and I need to find a jump animation. So let me just put in jump real quick, and let's find one that works. Yeah, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and choose this one. So what I need to do is to go ahead and hit download. I'm gonna choose FBX for Unity. And then I'm gonna choose without skin because I already have the skin in my game with my other player move animations. And I'm gonna leave everything else the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit download. And then I need to just pop over into Unity and bring that jump animation in. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bring my animation in to my Fong character. And then I need to extract the jump animation out of that model. So go ahead and bring that jump animation out. And I'm gonna go ahead and just rename it so that it's not confused with the one that's internal of the model. And there we go. If we click on our model, then you can see we have the animator that is set up for our idle walk and run. Well, we need to go ahead and add a jump to that. So what I can easily do is just to grab my jump animation, just bring that back down in. And then what we're gonna do is because we might set up more animations later on, we wanna be able to jump from any of our other states. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is just from any state, I'm gonna add a new transition, go over to my jump. And then of course, if we are in our jump, we wanna be able to add a transition to go back to our player idle walk run. So I'm gonna add a transition here as well over to idle walk run. Now I need to be able to trigger those transitions. So for me to be able to do that, I want to, in my parameters, I'm gonna add a couple triggers. So in this case, I'm gonna add a trigger of jump. And then I'm also going to add a trigger of landed. So that way when we land, if we're in our jump state and we hit the ground, we wanna be able to go back to our idle walk and run transition. So in this case, we're gonna add a new trigger and we'll just call it landed. Cool, now I can go ahead and select the transition. So from any state, I wanna be able to get into jump. So here we have our conditions and I'm gonna add a new condition of jump. So if we're in any state, we need to be able to trigger our jump animation. That's where the transition comes from. The other thing that we also wanna look at is that we want to can transition to self. So in the jump transition, we don't wanna trigger the jump animation again. So we're gonna go ahead and uncheck can transition to self. So that is set. Let's go ahead and go to the transition from jump to idle. And in this case, we want to be able to add a new condition here and this is going to be landed. So when we've landed, we wanna be able to go over to our idle walk run. So let's pop over into Playmaker so that we can make this all work. So in my player, I have my player controls. I'm getting input from my inputs. I'm using those input values for my character move. Well, we need to be able to get our inputs. So I'm gonna open up my player input actions and we currently have our player action map and I just need to add one action. So in this case, it's going to be called jump. And what we're gonna do is have an action type of button. So whenever we've hit that button, whatever that button is, we want to cause our jump to happen. So in this case, this is gonna be an action type of button. So we need to go ahead and bind our keys. So in this case, we are going to do a listen and I'm gonna do my keyboard spacebar. So I just type in spacebar and then here it pops up. And then I also wanna be able to set up my controller. So let's add one more binding. And in this case, I'm gonna do another listen. And I'm gonna hit my controller A key, which is my button south. I set up jump for both my keyboard and my controller. All right, so let's go ahead and close this. I have auto save on, so we're good. And now I need to go ahead and set up Playmaker. So currently going back to our Playmaker move, we are gathering our inputs from our vector to make our character move, but here we, we want to detect if we've hit one of our jump buttons. So I'm gonna go ahead and just type in player input button events. And now we need to go ahead and choose the action which is going to make that work. So I click on my inputs and here's all the available inputs and you can see player jump right there. Now I can take this and is pressed event. So if I push that button down, that's when I want to trigger my jump animation. So here we're gonna do a new event of jump. 
So we don't have that transition set up. So let's go ahead and add that transition and go over to a new state. So I'm holding down my control key and that adds a new state. And I'm gonna just call this jump. We wanna make the character controller jump. So we also have an action for that already. So I'm gonna just type in controller and controller jump right there. Now we've got some options here. These are options that you wanna play with for your game. So jump height, I'm gonna go ahead and make the jump height one. And we're definitely want world space here. And I'm not gonna mess with any of the multipliers for this in this certain case. The other thing that we wanna do is can we move while we're in our jump? So that's an option again that you need to choose. I'm gonna go ahead and choose yes. So here in our player input where we're dealing with our vector to move our character, we're storing the values that are being input in our move variable. So we're gonna use that variable right here, move, to be able to move our character while we're in the air. So we've got the in-air controls and we can set the speed. So we can set a minimum speed and a max speed. Again, we, we're, we're doing a variable option for when our character moves. So if we're walking or if we're running or if we're idle, we need to be able to detect if we can move. So I'm gonna go ahead and use set up just from one to maybe three on the speed there. And then we also need to detect if we've landed. So if we have hit the ground, we want to then go back to our player move. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up a new event and I'm just gonna call this landed. So in this case, we wanna transition back to our player move. Now it's not gonna trigger my animations yet. So we need to go ahead and set up the animation. So I have the controller jump set up, but we need to actually then trigger the animation to go along with that. So what I'm gonna do is to do an animator trigger. So set animator trigger, and we're gonna use a specific game object. And that game object is our character model. And if we click on the little three dot icon, you can see here are the triggers that we have available to us, so jump and landed. So in this case, we're gonna trigger the jump animation. Now, if we're doing this and we're going back to our landed state, which is in our player move, we also need to transition back to our idle walk run. So I'm gonna copy this animated trigger and also paste this down in so that we can then trigger the landed transition, which goes back to our idle walk run. So let's give this a test real quick. This should all work. And here I am looking around and I'm gonna hit my jump key. Boom, there we go. We are jumping and we're triggering our animation and I can do it while I'm in the run as well. Yeah, boom, there we go. So we now have jump in our third person controller. Hey, hope you enjoyed that tutorial and it's something you can use for your game. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon down there so you know when the next tutorial is available. Until next time.